Okay, so this fraction has a really crazy decimal expansion. I'm going to tell you the story of how I came across this. So this all starts with the fraction 1 7th and its famous decimal expansion 0 0.142857 recurring. So this will repeat 142857 and so on. And within this, it's always intrigued me that we have multiples of 7 here. So we have 14 and then double that is 28. And then double 28 is 56. So we almost get double the 28, but then this breaks when we get to the 7 here. So I wanted to try and understand why this is the case. And to start off, we could consider this using our knowledge of place value, that we've got 1 tenth and 4 hundredths. So we can write this as 14 over 100. And then for our 2 8, this is 2 thousandths plus 8 out of 10,000. Or we could write this as 28 out of 10,000. We could also write the 10,000 as 100 squared. And then we could keep going like this. Our 5, 7 is 57 out of 100 cubed, and so on. So then this looks almost like a geometric sequence where we're doubling, multiplying by 2, but then we have this 57 in place of a 56, which would be double the 28. So let's consider what would happen if we had the 56 instead. So if we compare this to if we had 14 out of 100 plus 28 out of 100 squared, and then the next one was 56 out of 100 cubed. The next one following this, double 56, would give us 112 out of 100 to the 4, and then after this we'd have 224 out of 100 to the 5, and so on. So here we can see we've got a geometric series kind of picture. So let's just consider this series, and then we'll come back to how this might link to the fraction 1 7. So we can really write this 14 out of 100 as being 2 times 7 out of 100. So 2 times 7 over 100. Then the next one is 2 squared times 7 out of 100 squared. And then the next one following this is 2 cubed times 7 over 100 cubed, and then you see the pattern, it's 2 to the 4 over 100 to the 4. So we can write this a bit more concisely as 7 times, and then we've got the sum of a geometric sequence. So we've got the sum from k equals 1 up to infinity of 2 out of 100 raised to the power of k. So you can see here, 2 squared out of 100 squared, 2 cubed out of 100 cubed, and so on. So then we can rewrite this 2 out of 100 as 1 over 50. So we've got temp 7 times the sum from 1 to infinity of just 1 50th raised to the power of k. And then we can use the fact that this is a geometric sequence to use the sum formula here. So our common ratio is less than 1, so we can write the sum is going to be the first term a over 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 over 50. So we can rewrite all of this as just 7 times the first term is 1 out of 50, and then we've got 1 minus the common ratio is also 1 minus 1 over 50. So then multiplying on the top and bottom by 50, we get 7 times 1 over 50 minus 1, so 7 times 1 over 49, and this is equal to 1 seventh. So this is saying then that our geometric sequence that we're interested in, this actually sums to give us 1 seventh. So this expression we've got here with the doubling is actually equal to 1 seventh. So then how does this connect to what we have without the doubling, where we would have 5, 7, and then we would have the next one here would be 1, 4 out of 100 to the 4, and the next one after this would be back down to 2, 8 out of 100 to the 5, and so on. So here you can see we're getting quite different answers, but we can think about this as like carrying. So this, 100 out of 100 to the 4, we could really take this and turn it into 1 out of 100 cubed. So if we add a 1 here, the 56 goes up to 57. And here, where we're now left with 12 out of 100 to the 4, we could carry this 2 here. So we've got 200 over 100 to the 5 is really the same as having 2 over 100 to the power of 4. So then we've got 14 here. And here, where we've got the 24 out of 100 to the 5, our next one following this would be 448 out of 100 to the 6. So just like before, we can carry this 4 over, and we do 24 plus 4, and this gives us our 28. And this continues just like this. So this gives us quite a nice way of understanding then why we get double these multiples of 7 in our decimal expansion for 1 7. So the reason is that effectively we've just got this 2 to the power of k here. So this is why 
we double our multiples of 7 each time, but then you can also see that this breaks when we get to the 56 or the 5, 7 term, because here we have to carry the 1 over, so this is where the pattern breaks. But this, the fact that we're multiplying by 2 each time, the 2 to the k, explains why we've got 14, 28, and then it almost works for the next one. So we've just observed this doubling phenomenon by considering strings of digits of length 2, so the 1, 4, 2, 8, and then the 5, 6, which turns into a 5, 7. But something that's less obvious about the decimal expansion of 1 seventh is if we actually consider strings of length 8, so this number, we think about this as being 14 million and so on, if we were to double this 8 digit number, we would get exactly this number, so 28 million and so on. Then if we were to double this number, we would get almost this 8 digit number. The only difference is instead of this 7, we would actually need a 6 here. So we're getting the same sort of behaviour here, but now with strings of length 8 rather than length 2. And just like before, we can consider this as being a geometric series. So we can write this as the sum of our first term is going to be 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4. Then after each of these first terms, so if we've got the first term is k is 1, we're going up to infinity. So we're dividing this by this 8 digits. So it's 10 to the power of 8 raised to the power of k. But then we're also multiplying this by 2 to the power of k minus 1 here. So we don't need a power of k, it's k minus 1 because the first term is just this number. But then we could take out a factor of 2, so we could have a half on the outside and then we could raise this as 2 to the power of k instead. So let's just consider the sum of this geometric sequence. So if we were to take out this factor of 1428714 and divide it by 2, we're actually going to get this number that we're interested in from the start, this 714 2, 8, 5, 7. It's just this divided by 2. And then we're left with quite a nice series. We've just got 2 divided by 10 to the power of 8 raised to the power of k. So again, this sum just going from k is 1 up to infinity. So here we can just use the series formula for a geometric series. So then we get, we can write this as 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 multiplied by the first term is 2 over 10 to the 8, and then 1 minus the common ratio, 1 minus 2 over 10 to the power of 8. So just like before, multiplying by 10 to the 8 on the top and bottom, we're going to get 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, multiplied by 2 over, we get 10 to the 8 minus 2. I'm actually going to write this out in full now as 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8. And then here we can do 2 times 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. This gets us back to our original number. So 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, divided by 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8. And then if we were to simplify this fraction, almost miraculously, this turns out to be equal to 1 7. So what we're going to really focus on here is, for the sake of understanding where this interesting result is going to come from, if we look at this step here, we've got 7142857 times this sum. This is equal to 1 7th. So let's just write this out in full. So we've got 1 7th is equal to 7142857 times this sum from k equals 1 up to infinity of 2 over 10 to the 8 all raised to the power of k. So this explains the doubling effect when we consider eight-digit strings in the decimal expansion of 1 seventh. But actually hidden within this equation is a different explanation for a slightly different doubling effect. So if we take this equation and just multiply by 7 on both sides and divide by this number, so on the left-hand side we'd now get 1 over 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. And on the right-hand side we've multiplied by 7, we get 7 times this sum to infinity of 2 over 10 to the 8 raised to the power of k. So then here, this is saying that the decimal expansion of this fraction, we have 7 times 2 over 10 to the power of 8, then the next one is 7 times 2 squared over a different power of 10, and so on. So if we just write out the first few terms in this, we've got 7 times 2, so 14 over 10 to the power of 8, and the next one is 28 over 10 to the power of 8 squared, then the next one after this, we double the 28, we get 56 over 10 to the power of 8 
cubed. And you can see here, if we were to evaluate all of these, we wouldn't need to worry about carrying causing any issues until we get up to a really big number, because the 56 and we go to 112 and so on, we don't get anything where we need to carry for many, many iterations of this process. So you can see here the 14 over 10 to the 8 is exactly this part of the decimal expansion here, and then the 28, 56 and so on. So this is explaining where this is coming from. So if we were to keep going like this, we'd get all the way to, if we have 7 times 2 to the power of 22, we get a 28360128. So this is equal to 7 times 2 to the 22. And then we go to the next one. If we try 7 times 2 to the 23, so if we were to double this again, we would now end up with 587202, and we get a 56, but the actual decimal expansion here has a 7 in place of the 6. So this is actually equal to 7 times 2 to the 23 minus 1. So we actually get 22 repeating blocks of 8 here where this doubling pattern works. And it's only when we get onto the 23rd block, so the 184th digit here, where we have a 7 where we should actually have a 6 according to this doubling pattern. You can see this is coming from the carrying. If we were to double this next number, we'd get a 1, which we need to carry in here, which explains why we get the extra plus 1. So I think this is really cool that we've gone from understanding the decimal expansion of 1 7th, and we get as a little fact almost for free here, we get this amazing decimal expansion where we've got this pattern of doubling over these eight digit strings that works for 22 digits and it's only once we get up to digit number 184 where this pattern starts to break. And in case you were wondering, yes we can actually extend this result further. So instead of considering strings of length 2 or of length 8, we could add another six digits to our string and consider a string of length 14. So if you think about these 14 digits, if we consider this as a 14 digit number and double it, the number we would get is exactly the number represented by the next 14 digits in the decimal expansion of 1 7th. And then if we were to double this number again, we would get almost the number represented by the next 14 digits. The only difference is we would need a 6 in place of this 7 here, at which point the doubling procedure stops to work. So you can see that 1 7th, we can rewrite this as a geometric series. We won't go through the argument here, but just like before, you can evaluate the sum of this geometric series and show that this is equal to 1 7th. And then tidying this up a little bit, taking out a factor of 2, we can write 1 7th is this number times the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 2 over 10 to the 14 raised to the power of k. And then just like before, if we multiply by 7 on both sides and divide by this number on both sides, we get that 1 over this 13-digit number is now going to be 7 times the sum to infinity of 2 to the k divided by 10 to the 14 to the k. So this means when we consider the decimal expansion of this fraction here, we're going to get this doubling procedure working again over 14-digit strings now. And this one goes even further than before because you can see 7 times 2 to the k needs to get really, really big before it's getting close to having 14 digits, at which point we need to worry about carrying, and this is where the pattern can break. So we actually have 42 instances where this doubling pattern works, and it's only on the 43rd instance, so 7 times 2 to the power of 43, where we have to carry from the next turn. This is where the pattern breaks. So this breaks on the 602nd digit. So I think this is really cool that we could keep going like this as well, and we could add another 142857 to the number in the denominator here, and then we would get something where the pattern would continue even further with this doubling, because we'd have a larger power of 10. So having the larger power of 10 means we can go further with our doubling without having to carry. And then you could even generalise this. So instead of having strings of length 2 or 8 or 14, you could do 2 plus 6 times n, where n is some positive integer, and then show that this pattern can give you actually an arbitrary number of terms where this doubling procedure keeps on working until we have to carry, at which point the pattern would break.